Uh, what I'd like to do is, to, you know, I, I also have a um, presentation to give you to the um, discussing about the overlay, right? But I would like to wrap it up a little bit so that, you know, we will, we will take you through some examples that I have for the, for the class covering from, from the beginning when we start a very, very simple assignment. Okay, and then going through the um, simdizing, going through the, uh, the DIM-8, how do we do the DIM-8, how do we do the DIM-8 list, and we, hand up, we were discussing about if we have a large array of data, okay, in the main memory, and how do we DIM-8 that memory down to the, lo to the local store, so our local store program can run that one, and through which techniques, the DIM-8 list, the uh, multi-bufferings, and also this, the discussion of after we exceeding 256k byte or 200k byte, who is going to take care of that one? Don't forget, the, all of the operations and DMAs was handled by the MFC. The MFC will handle that once we do the MFC list commands, the MFC, the MFC hardware uh, will handle the, um, the supplying using the data and address from that list. We will supply the data to your programs. I will show you how to do that one. Okay, let, let's say that I will take you a, a tour here, right? And bear with me, you know, that's uh, some of the things that we may um, um, seen before or may not, right? Let's say that we have a very straightforward program, right? We all understand this, this code. In, we have a float of ABC, right? And then we have a main program, so we do A equal to B plus C, and then we return a zero, okay? And now we'll take you through and ask you to show me how to convert these programs to an a, um, SPU program or the PPU or whatever, the embedded program we talked about the last two days, right? Today, if you have any questions, I will be, uh, Hema and I will, will respond to you and answer your question, right? So we quit over here. All right, so now what we need to do, this is any program. What do we need to do in order to make this one is a PPU program? Just compile it easy. We do this. Uh, what, what, what compiler that we use? XFC or uh, GCC? SPU minus uh, GCC, right? T2.C, correct? If we want to put down? Uh, T1.C, fine, that's good, right? Oh, okay. I have a T2.C and T1.C. We'll show you what it, all right, so we're okay, right? Do at least we have a something A.R. Can we execute this program now? No, not yet, right? We have to bring it over simulator. Fine, we don't, we don't worry about that. Okay, now let's go that. Let's make this one, this program, practice this program as a PPU and SPU program. Okay? And tell me how to do this one, all right? So I have, let me have this one program, uh, bring it back, T1.C. Okay, what portion do we want to make an SPU and what we want to make in a PPU? Okay, let's, let's do this one. Okay, let, let's say that this one over here, we will make it as is what um, we, we save these programs. We, we will make this, this um, loop here, uh, these uh, this operations as a SPU program. Okay, so we save this one, uh, write this one as is um, T1 underscore PPU dot C. And then we figure it out, right? And then we write a lazy one. Uh, right one is a T1 underscore SPU. Let's see. So we save sometimes. Okay, right? So now we go back in here. We say that we have an SPU program. This is our SPU program. And now remember, float A and B and C. We just bring it down there, right? So we have a, an application, an SPU application with its own data, right? To keep the data down in the SPU. Okay, it's fine. Okay, main here, the same thing. Insert arguments. This is an SPU program, right? Three arguments that we need to have. Number one is? All right. Unsigned, long, long, right? Unsigned, unsigned, long, long. SPE, SPE, what, ID, right? We need to have an SPE ID because this is an SPU program. Unsigned, long, long again, of what? Argument pointer, ARG, right? 
and unsigned, long, long, environment pointer, env, p, whatever, right? Okay. And, okay, so, so we have this, we have a ABC. Do we need to do anything here? The data is still here. The, I bring the data to float ABC down to here. Okay, so we finish, right? Hema, make sure that I, I do the correct programming here, right? All right, so we write and quit. Okay, uh, VI, the, our PPU, T1, underscore PPU, dot C, correct? All right, now I have the data down in my uh, SPU, so I just go ahead and delete these guys, right? Uh, okay, delete these guys, okay. This loop, uh, this, uh, this um, operation here is now be, belong to the SPU. So I command this out, right? I insert this one, command this one out, and, come, and it returns, uh, I need to return this one, all right? So this is my SPU, PPU code. First thing, what I need to do? I need to create an SPE thread, right? S, uh, SPE create thread, correct, right? And I give what? What, what is thread? The AD. Hammer. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. All right, thread. All right. And then what? The first argument is what? My group ID, right? I put it zero. So this is my, my what? My, uh, my uh, group ID. Group, uh, SPE group ID, right? SPE group ID. Okay. The next one would be what? What's the next argument here? My, my program handle, right? This is the pointer to my program handle, which is T1 underscore SPU, right? Come on, this is my program handle. Okay, and go down. The third argument is what? My pointer, right? Which is my node node over here. I just put none here because I would say that, all right, this one is a is my argument pointer, our pointer, pointer here, and then the third one is node, okay? And then this is um, um, environment pointer, ENVP, and e ENVP pointer, right? And then I have a, and then sorry, and then what do we have? We have a mass ID, right, okay, the, uh, the minus one, when we use minus one because it's not working fine, you know, as of now, any, Okay, this is uh, my, um, my, my, um, my, my SPE, SPE affinity, right, need T. And then we have a zero with a flux, right, that's for the um, um, TID, right, okay. Uh, flux, right, the, the, the flux one for my, okay, and then what? Then I have to wait for, right? I always have SPE, wait, okay. SPE wait for my uh, for my SPE SPE ID ha right SPE ID status and zero. Now, so now we going back up right. This this code right we return what? Voila yes, in SPE ID return to right. SPE ID not too fast right. Now, SPID, so we have this one, so we, we have to declare the SPID somewhere, correct? And okay, I, SPE, ID, underscore T, right? Oops, SP. SPE, ID, underscore T, what? It's my SPE ID, SPE ID, right? Status, I declared over here as well, so I have to in status, right? Okay, now, in this program, I use what? T1 is got uh, SPU, which is my program. I have to go back up here. I have to declare some things up here, right? Before this domain, right? External, external what? External of um, SPE underscore program handler, handler underscore T, right? And then the name of the program is T1 underscore SPU, right? That's it. So that's my SPE program, correct? All right, what a quit, right? And my Mac file, my, my SPU Mac file. What, is look, what look like my SPU Mac file? 
VI, let's for example, right? This is because I would have the directory. Okay, so now we have the PPU program, the SPU program, correct? We need to do the Mac file. The Mac file is on the PPU, straightforward, right? We specified what? Okay, let's, let's do it. This is the Mac file for the uh, PPU, okay? I'm, I'm just to make it up, so do we go. Uh, this is the, well, this is already made, this is the make file for the, for the, P, for the SPU, right? We don't have anything here. And, okay, let's say that, let's assume that this one is the make file for the PPU, right? Program underscore PPU here, right? And the T1 uh, PPU, correct? And then what? We have to import, very good, import ORTS, import what? Import the, we assume the T1, T1 underscore SPU dot A, the files right there. Okay, and then the last one. Now let's say that this, if this one is an SPU Mac file, okay, this is SPU Mac file. Okay, so the program is the SPU, correct? All right, and then over here we, we do what? We say that, we do the, Library, right? We specified a library embedded, all right? Library underscore embed equal to equal to what? What we embed in here? We embed under. Let's say that this this is the SPU program under the SPU directory, correct? Right? And we we embed, so we have to go back to the PPU program added the directory DS they call the SPU, so we do the SPU. Blah. Details, you know. Okay, SPU um, T1 underscore SPU dot A, right? And then LSPE, correct? Okay, so we have in here. What I have shown you is that a typical, this is on the, um, on the PPU programs, one thing's missing. Um, What do I miss here? <laughs> include, but but say include what? Include what? Live SPE dot H, right? This is I need it because I do the thread creations. If I if I don't do anything, you know, I, I don't need this guys, right? Okay, so, all right, so we we um, we have the T one dot C program, fine. So far so good. All right. Let's take a look at the .c program. <laughs> Same program, right? Now we float, we make an array, three arrays. 1,000, 1,000, 1,000. And the main is, you know, now we do a loop, we do from the loop count and we do loop, right? So far we're okay? All right, uh, okay, we, we, let me go back to here, and then the day three sim trees, and I will go to what I have in here, and I'll show you. What I have in here is have a directories of seven different test cases, all right? I have the one PPU only, one is self DMA with one SPU, we do the transferring here, okay? And then we do another DMA transfer example here, and we do the DMA list transfer, we do the multi-SPU, we split the task into different SPU, and we do the multi-bufferings, and we do the software cache. The software cache I mentioned yesterday, but I did not have the time to go through. I forgive me because that I want to bring you up to speed so that we we'll wrap it up remind you what we've been through, and now let's take a real, some real examples. And this example here, this is the H file. Okay, use the text part because this is quicker than go do this. And this H file, what do we have in here? This is an open source version, so it's all come help. I don't have anything. Okay, so I'm going to bring it up. This is my PPU programs. Okay, bear with me. I, I walked through a little bit um, 
slowly it's here, but um, then they move it on quite a fast, right? Standard IOH, we don't, is it clear enough for, for all of you in the back? It's okay. So, what we have in here, we de define an array size of 1024 and a number 512. And I use this one so I can define the alignment of array A, array B, and array C. Okay, so a little bit changing, but here, nothing else. We say that my align here, given my var, def defined, and my, um, my array, my, my alignments here, and then we define the attribute would be for this one. So I use this one here to define the my align of array A, array B, array C. It's nothing else but to define array A is a, uh, an array of um, 1024, alignment of 128 byte. Align of 1028 byte, align 128 byte. So what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to, to add the, the two elements together, all right, and put in, um, in C or A or B, whatever. Okay, so this is a, 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 a routine I use to initialize an array, nothing else, right? I put an array here, I call it init array, and I have an array to, um, A to sub I here, go to all the I elements, I times num, I times num times two, and so on. Clear? So far we okay? Nothing, no, we haven't done anything yet. Let's look at the main program here. There's some tricks and techniques that I would like to share with you. That's up to you to use it or not, okay? In here, we do the in, integer array, right? We do an add array. Array C, A plus B. That's it. Instead of two numbers now, I have an array. Okay, C equal to A plus B. And I print out array, verifying some number. That's my, uh, my PPU program. So far, you with, you with me? Okay. Is this, is this program, PPU? Uh, PPU program, standard, right? We haven't called anything, we haven't split it yet. Okay, right, okay, all right, you will see. Okay, so we have that, and then uh, PPU only programs, that's the only thing we have. Let's take a look at these guys. All right, in the step one, array of H, um, okay. What I'm doing here is that I define a structure here. I call it control block, right? I have in A, I have A, B, and C, okay? And I also have size. So each of the elements here is what? Four byte, four byte, four byte, four byte. Okay, I, I will align this, the control, uh, this, this structure here to 128 bytes. So I have to pass it here, right? I have to pass that address so I have 128 bytes. Okay, so that is my control blocks. All right, we finish that one. We take a look at the step one. Step one corresponding to the programs you know, that has not simdized yet, and step two is the simdized version of the program. Okay, so you have a, a Scala version and a simdized version, what you can look at you know, when you get the times. This afternoon, or if not, I give you this one. You can look at you know, by the times you go home and so on. Let's look at the SPU program, all right? I bring up this one using my text path. Okay, this is my, 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 all right, I will get out this one. I would like to bring up the, um, the SPU program as well, right? So I can put side by side and we go over, so what's going on? Right, so I, I, I did that and then I, on the window, I put them, uh, I tie them so vertically, right. Okay, so this is what? This is my, um, my SP program. Okay. What I'm going to do is that in this program here, this is my, um, My PPU program. On my left side is my PPU program, the right side is the SPU program. Correct? All right, so on my PPU program, I'm going ahead and allocate it, um, define it, my the alignment of my array here, A, B, C. Correct? And then initialize it here. Didn't change anything? Nothing. Okay. Then I initialize uh, the main program, initialize array, and we create an SB thread, okay?
and create an SP thread to process the narrate SPU. Okay? I create an, 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 S, an SPU here, and I uh, create the threads. And in this example, I will send address now to the mailbox, which I really don't want to show you yet, but you know, just go ahead and, and, and show you here. I will, show, I will send effective address to the SPE, down to the mailbox. Okay, I create an SPE thread, and this is my SPE program, nothing I send it out, right? I will use the mailbox to send a, an address now. The mailbox is used for message, sending message, all right? In this case, instead of sending message, I will send an address now. I will use um, the SPE ID here, which the SPE ID that I just created, okay? And I, I send the address of the array A and put in that mailbox. This is the address of what? Of the array A. And this is the address of array B. Okay? And also this is the address of array C. Why do I want to do that? Why do I want to do the, why would, I can either send my address now when I create the, uh, the thread. I have a three arrays, so I have to, uh, to do the same thing for three times, right? Or I can send the address of the control blocks, and let the control block contain the address of my array A and B and C. Or I can do this one as well. That's why I want to show you the two different techniques. So this is the first, te the first technique, using the, the mailbox to send it out to, to the, an address of an array, all right? So we do that one, we, we have the address, but at the end of this one, I send it down to the SPE three address of the array. What does that function SPE start in the mailbox? Okay, so now on, on the SPU programs, on the um, I have a, the, the control blocks declared here. This is my local. Okay, somewhere. Okay, right here. The alignment control block. This control block is local CB is local to my SPU programs. I still declare the array. A and B and C right here. I get the um, the control the, uh, with the argument pointer from these programs. I get the uh, the address, um, the effective address from the AI AI PGP here. And then the, uh, the 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 size of the control blocks. Okay, and the tag here thirty one. So I, I get that the um, um, I get that address for. I get the address of the control block now. So by, by using now the, um, uh, the MFC get, where I have the, have the address of the A here, and B on the local now, and the, um, the, uh, the components is the A component, the address of the, um, um, the array A, and address of the array, array B here. I download it now to my local areas here, and then perform the uh, calculations. I perform the calculations just right here. Okay, same things. A, B, C, uh, C equal to A plus B, whatever. When finish, I send it back. MFC put here, uh, array dot C, uh, array dot C, C is the local array, the effective address here, CB, in my uh, control blocks, and then the size and so on, I send it back. We, so what, what, what we did was that we do, we, what we had before was that we have in, in the additional operations on the PPU, right? And now we shift it out to the SPU, All right? So we, everything that now, instead of having the data down into the SPU, we said we keep the data somewhere in the, in the uh, effective address, right? And when we send the control block down so we can identify or we can um, um, acquire the address of the array A and B and C, and then we, we use that one, demate the data down, okay? <coughs> Control block techniques, right? No um, mailbox, nothing. We have a control block we defined before on the array uh, underscore h um, underscore add dot h here, that heading file. We have we declared the array here, the size, uh, one um, array size, 
alignment 128 bit, uh, 128 byte alignments. We have a function here to do the initialize array in a main program. Look at the main program. We initialize an array, okay? And then we, we check the, um, the number of SP working. You know, this is an extra, extra nears. If you want to be really careful, you do that. Only it's the same, right? And now, here it is. I think it's much better. It's much clearer for you. This is the CB.A. This is CB.B and CD.C. The C of, um, we get the address of array A, beginning the first locations, right? And we give it to A, CB.A. Refer to CB.A, and we get the address of array B, okay, and send it. This is B components, okay, and address of C, and then the size, and C size, okay. It clear in this structure here, and then we create an SPA thread. Again, the same thing, group ID, the name of the program, and here, here's what we send it out. We send a control block now. Okay, so what we actually we send a structure now which contain address of A, address of B, address of C, and each of these guys is thousand. Do we care about breaking up? How we don't we don't care yet, right? We we, and so we go into print. After that, we print and so on. We don't care this one. And and here we synchronizing, right? A lot of time we talked about you know once we, how do we know and when we when we know that we finish transferring the data and how we sync the address between the local store and effective address. This is the typical um, instruction we use to sync between the, the two of them. Okay, we do that one and we, we wait for the SP complete. Okay, so this is the SPU program. On the SPU programs, I define everything the same like we before. This array here, control blocks. This is my local control block CB over here. And then the first one would be, you know, to get the um, I already have the control block passing down for me in this argument here, right? So I, I go ahead and use that argument and get the data of the size of, of the control blocks. Bring it down, and then now I have the control block down on my SPU. Oh, now, all right, so I use that one now. I refer to the component A. Use that one to refer to my effective address, and use the CB, and then do the two, uh, the two MFC get, right? One to get the A, one to get the B, and then write tag mass and so on. And the, the, the size already specified by the size that I have when I bring it out into argument pointer here, passing to me when I create a thread. I do the matrix add, and I put it back. I put it back C here, CBC. So what we did was that we have a control block doubt, you know, somewhere, define it that containing some address of an array A and B and C and the size and so on. And we pass on the, on the PPU, we use that one to load the data, and then on the SPU, we pass that control block, the address of that control block down to the SPU, so we can refer to the element within that control block. That's it. All right. And then we use that one to, uh, as an effective address so we can download you know, the data to array A, data to array B, so we can perform this operation here. And we use the same strategy again, send it back to, to, the, um, um, to, to, to the, um, the, the PPU program. That's how do we break up the, the data and then how do we change. This is the um, SPU versions of the programs of the SPU program we just mentioned about. And for, however, this is the, um, um, the vector uh, versions, right? <clears throat> and here I do the same things. My, my define my alignment is still the same. And my arrays, I declare the array now instead of the full array size, 1024 or so, something like that. I divide it by four, right? Because and now I declare this one is a vector. My array A com is a, a contains uh, is a contains a vector. It's a vector of um, um, elements. It's a vector of um, array B and a vector of array C. Control block the same. Okay, I do the same thing. See, I form this is a SPU program. I get the control blocks from my argument list over here. Check the tag mask, status, whatever. I get the array. I, we do the same thing, do the same thing, do the same things. Nothing changed in terms of data transferring. Get and put, do the same thing, right? Through the control block. Okay. The actual operations, 
Now instead of array um, of sub i equal to array a plus array b, okay, we have a SPU add. I have to use intrinsic functions to add the skies. And we get four statements over here because of what? Because of what we're doing here. Unroll the loop. Uh, we unroll really the loops right here, right? So we, we, we not only vectorize this one, but unroll to, to make some optimization as well. So that uh, when we speed up, we, you can leave it here. If I raise the four or whatever, we're just doing one at a time, you know, but. Tracing the button. Pardon me? Tracing in four parts. Right. Part. By just converting, because we're, uh, are we operating on vectors? Yeah, we're. we're Four elements, right? Yeah. This the story here is that once you, um, yeah, the, the vectorized versions is you know you have to take care of your uh, your data here. It's now instead of single elements, it's now the four elements per um, per instructions or per, per array, and then you do have the um, um, the, uh, the calculation that you need to take care of. Memory transfer remains the same. Nothing changed. So you deal with data on it. Is it possible to get a single variable out of a vector? Yeah. Single element with extra, right? Extract. Right. OK, so we finished that one. Let's take a look at the uh, DMA list. OK, this is my the array H. I think will be the same. I didn't change anything. The control block, OK. This control block remain the same, right? And now we add the structure here. Remember, this, um, the, the element of the list is an A byte, all right? And then we have the, the first um, bit, whatever. We have a, the, um, um, the store uh, bit. And then we have a, some of the bit reserve here. And the number of bytes transferred is um, 16. So this, this determines the, the bits uh, structures here. And then the size of this one is the, the unions of this um, unsigned int. Uh, on 32, and then um, and then this structure here. So we have we define this one is the unsigned in E low. All right. Uh, step one on my PPU program. What I'm doing in my PPU program. In my PPU program. I still floating, declare my array here. My control blocks the same. My control blocks now uh, contains A, B, C, the array, and then the, the size and so on. So I have this one the same, nothing changed. I'm going down here. I check for the working hardware, nothing changed here. My control blocks get the data from my control block. I said A and B and C. And I create the threads, OK. The SPU program, we pass the control block down, and we do we wait for SPU finish. Do we change anything? Nothing. Okay. Right. Okay. So far so good. We just go on over here, and then we pick up the the SPU program. No, no, wrong one. Right here, right in my list. This is my SPU program. My array is the same. Nothing changed here. My DMA list now, I have this struct. We call the DMA list um, elements. We call that list. We have a 16 elements. So we, 16 that means what? We have a 16 command, right? A list of 16 DMA commands. OK. Why, why the 16 DMA commands? Because how, how many how many bytes we transfer out every time? Maximum is what? Two K. We 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 see right. Okay. Align a byte right. DMA the control blocks into local store. We get that DMA control blocks. So we have everything down to the local store now. Next. We, okay, we do have a what we call the transfer to large regions. Okay, 
And now we have a two, two routines here, right? We, we have a one is transfer to large region where we go ahead. We, we call this routine here, uh, transfer to large regions. We give an address of array A. We say that, okay, now transfer the address of the go ahead and get this effective address here that I passing by my, in my control blocks. Okay, and, and local is the array A over here. And this is the size, how much, how many is, um, that, that you translate going down. And one, I think that's the sum of the flux that I set down here. Okay, this is my transfer to large region. Let me go through here. There's been you know, a couple of weeks I work in this one. So, um, unsigned, uh, tag ID, the list size. Uh, if the number of bytes are not equal to zero, whatever, to <coughs> return. Okay, greater than zero, unsigned the size over here. Is what I'm trying to do the same thing like the um, Hemage has explained. I'm working through the list, okay? And I say that, you know, I have a, if I um, answer the size, if I have it greater than 16K, right? The size over here is n byte, it's less than 16, uh, 384, or n byte, uh, otherwise n byte is a 16K. So I move a 16K at a time. And then down over here, list of i, the size 032. I, I, assigned, I put a size in there, and then my effective address low, I put in, in, the, in here. And then increase the size, I, I reduce the size of the, the buffer, of my main buffer there, of the arrays um, that I have, and then increase that size, how many more bytes that I transfer. And I go back to this loop. So what I'm trying to do in here is that I transfer 16K at a time, and I use the EA low, to identify my, to, to, to move my pointers right the next, I move this one, uh, 16K, and then next 16K, next 16K, okay? And then um, the list size here, we take up the size of the DMA list elements. Okay, so I have that. Now, I, I have all these laid out for me, and now I do the actual work, right? Now, if I pass to either one or one or zero here, right? If it's one, if it's get here, and I define it get somewhere, this is uh, either one or zero, and I, you know, this, depending on the condition that I, the flag I set there, I can do the get list or um, put list, right? If the get list, I have the local address right here, and at the, the list elements start by uh, the first elements, and give it the effective address load over here, and then the size, the list size, and the, um, um, the, um, the, the name of the list, the, the first location of the, um, of the, the DMA list, and either, either put, put out, and this is correspond the same exactly. You see that all of these instructions, MFC get, MFC put out, basically the argument list is the same argument list. Right? So either we use we specified the local stored address, the effective address here, and then the list address. All right, so and then we let it go. Do we, do we care about you know, how often and, and we don't finish or not? No, right? We just use this subroutine here, okay, to get the data and supply it right here. We move, this how we use to move the data to array A, move the data to array B, and then so we perform this function here and then we transfer it back. And we use this flag here to say that this is, this is my put L. So we use the put L to get L and the put L to get the data is in the list. So we don't have to worry about, you know, just individually. So that's a different technique we use. So, mm. We have seen both the examples doing exactly the same thing. Correct. Okay. So in this, even in this list example, since you're putting it into already defined arrays, you're not exceeding 256K at all. Okay. Okay. So the question of uh, 16K into 2K doesn't arise because you will never exceed that. You are putting it into this particular array. All right. So what is the advantage of a get list over a single call which gets me the full array? Single data is more than 16K, 
Okay. okay. So if I got single data which is more than 16K data transfer, then I can use this. All right. You can use DMA, regular DMS also, but it takes overhead in setting up a DMA every single time. Yeah. Over here, you're saving that overhead. Okay. question in mind, okay, basically a list does it in chunks, okay, so even if the list is not over, I can actually start processing the first chunk. Yes. Is that the advantage? Exactly. Because it's asynchronous. Okay. But uh, then there is no mechanism for me to know which chunk is finished. And that's, we have to leave that as a going. That's the point. <laughs> no, is there any way of knowing? That is there a way, way of knowing? Like, see, when I do a MFC get, I do check for the status. Yeah. It is yes. over. Yeah, that's up to the runtime environment to see, okay, is the data there? Then we will go ahead and process it. Because we have. Inside the program, can I find out that uh, what is the status? First list tell, item is over, second is over, third is over, no. As far as I know, there is no But there was, a, there was a tag bit, no? Yeah, you can wait for the completion of the DMA, but you can't go and check. Each list element has got added a tag bit. Each list element at a tag bit. Sorry? Each list element, your 8 byte element has got a tag bit. Same tag bit. It's all under one category. Oh. The whole list. So I thought that was used for completion or non completion. No, it's for one, one whole list has one tag bit. So one data tag. Okay, this is an example of double buffering on the PPU program. PPU program the same, nothing changed, right? Straightforward, and then um, um, initialize array. The, the programmer here this is the SPU, and um, okay, the, 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 the check for the working hardware, and then I, I do the here's the, I identify the buffer here. Okay, I have the array size times i divided by eight. It's the offset into my array, and then so this is the 60, 63, 60, 63, 64, the full 64 uh, byte here uh, for the offset sub i increase at one, and then start array in the cache line. Get the control blocks, uh, going down. Okay, let me let me do this. Uh, let me go and get the SPU program. Uh, SPU is better. <laughs> Um, T breaks, T breaks, um, five minutes T break, five minutes, and then um, I take an offline some questions. Okay, come, yeah. Okay, let, let me bring up the, the SPU program as well. <laughs> 